So, so I must say on a personal note, part of what I do is I go out and talk to people that are doing uh, large sequencing projects. And, uh, you know, they say, well, I, I don't know, you know, I mean, can dbGaP sort of mediate my large sequencing project? And I say, well, look at ADSP. It's awesome. So um, now I'm looking forward to seeing a talk about right. ADSP. All right. Thank you so much. You. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I don't know if we're awesome, but uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, show you some of our like, things that we did. So I, I'm from University of Pennsylvania, and uh, we have a project uh, called NIGAS, NIGENIA is Alzheimer's disease data storage sites. We actually start, got our funding roughly the same time when ADSP started, and uh, that's in 2012. So a little background, Alzheimer's disease, you all know about this. This is a very devastating disorder. Uh, brain comes with brain atrophy, loss of cognitive abilities and memories, and uh, uh, the decline could be up to 10 years. At this moment, there's no cure. There will no clear means to uh, maintain, like manage the symptoms. And uh, at this moment, more than five million people have Alzheimer's, and uh, it's going to be a really, really big problem. Already a big problem, yes. Uh, so in 2012, uh, this project was announced. Alzheimer's disease sequencing project. The idea is to uh, uh, perform large-scale whole genome and whole exome sequencing to find new genes and potentially drug targets, therapeutic targets for Alzheimer's disease. And it is a collaboration between NHGRI and NIA, and of course, uh, support from NCBI and DBGAP for data uh, sharing. Uh, NHGRI, the three common disease genome centers, will provide in-kind sequencing. NIA has uh, existing large-scale genetic co consortiums, ADGC, as well as CHARGE, uh, providing samples and phenotypes, and two other projects. Uh, uh, resources are responsible for sample management and uh, this data coordination. So uh, the, the study actually has multiple side, uh, phases, and the project continues to evolve. And I'd like to focus on the first phase uh, discovery, which started uh, in 2012, and the sequencing started in 2013. It has whole genome sequencing design for uh, family design, almost 600 individuals, as well as a case control whole exome design of uh, almost 11,000 individuals, 5,000 cognitive normal controls, and 6,000 cases. So this is roughly the timeline. The project started in 2012, but it took a while for all the things we set together, talking about what the design should be, look at all the available cohorts. And in the meantime, probably starting in the summer, where uh, we started talking with DBGAP and uh, talked with Mike, talked with Adam Stein from S uh, SRA. And uh, well, we, we just started. So there are a lot of things we are really learning about, like all these policies. One, one thing is with the OSB presentation earlier, which all the DACs and DARs and policies, we started to learn about it. And you know, one thing I want to say is uh, I use dbGaP. I go there, get data. I don't need to know any of these hidden details. So you guys did a great job of hiding all these really complicated things set up to satisfy policies. And I'm, I'm grateful. And, uh, but it's also like eye-opening when we started learning about this. The data, well, we started getting the sequence data around 2013. And then there's first whole genome data and whole exome data. And we start releasing the data to the community as soon as the data is being generated. And, and still ongoing, there's additional phases, additional genome that's going to be sequenced in down the road. So it's going to keep us busy for a while. The data flow, because we're working with all the different projects and uh, existing infrastructures, uh, this is how it goes. Uh, ADGC in charge provides DNA and phenotypes. And the three sequence centers provide uh, like in-kind sequencing. They get a DNA. They perform. The, the data is really good quality. And I think ADSP is also probably the first project that works with all three sequence centers at the same time. And, and we're responsible for data coordination. That means we're going to set up the study at dbGaP. We receive the phenotypes. We clean it up and uh, format and push it to dbGaP uh, and, and coordinate and synchronize for uh, uh, the schedule for a data release. And uh, it's very complicated. It's a lot of work. So we got a lot of help from dbGaP and SRI. We're really, really grateful. And uh, at the end, the data is released with DBGAP and SRI for uh, public access. So we're interacting with many, many different groups. In addition to all the different uh, entities I was talking about, uh, we're also responsible for supporting ADSP work groups. We have at least 10 work groups at the beginning and we're going to look at different kind of analysis, annotation, sample, phenotype, 
harmonizations and annotations by from annotations. So they all need to work on the same set of data with high quality, quality checks. And so one of the things that we really got help is uh, dbGaP has uh, this exchange area where we can take advantage of. We can put pre-release data on that side and everybody can come here and have access to the data early. So uh, the work groups can perform quality checks, make sure the data is good quality before going out to the community. It's really, really important. The data access, uh, one of the things we started to test, it's, it's a pilot project is, uh, well, we, we also have a data access uh, committee uh, within NIAGAD, uh, and it consists of independent uh, uh, investigators uh, who are familiar with the uh, disease. And uh, we came up with this idea that we'd like to be able for the uh, people who analyze the data and publish the findings to send their analysis results and derive data back as well. So they will submit a derived secondary return plan as an additional document. And when the application comes in, it's processed by, by the DAC. And we, well, the, the data access committee uh, review, com uh, data use committee at NIGAS is only looking at the secondary data and see if it's reasonable, if it fits the, uh, you know, the research plan. But uh, the final decision is done by the uh, ADS feedback at uh, dbGaP. And uh, it has worked pretty well, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think this is a way to uh, make sure that uh, we encourage the investigators who use the data can send their analysis results back, which a lot of them are, well, they're processed differently, they are genome-wide summary statistics, and uh, these are useful resources that the community uh, could benefit from it. The other collaboration, which is still ongoing, but I, I really like this collaboration, is uh, we, uh, it's probably started in the summer in 2012 when we started talking about this. Uh, we're trying to figure out if there are any additional things we can do together, uh, given that uh, where the data should reside, where the data access should be. Uh, and, and, and we realized that actually this is an interesting opportunity we could just develop something uh, that's the time when uh, dbGaP and SRA started to move to this new tool called SRA tool, which allows us uh, uh, investigators to uh, better download data more with more flexibility in addition to the existing web interfaces. You can actually, well, if you have a list of files you want to download, you can actually download it using a command line. For example, now that uh, cloud computing, uh, a lot of people are using it, well, you can grab data from dbGaP more easily. So this is, we, we came up with this uh, plan to set up a portal, which is a close collaboration with DPI and SRA, where as the idea is we will set up a user interface that allows investigators to find out what data is available, presenting different kind of information, and we can, you know, have customized ways of organizing all the files. Whereas the actual files, the data use uh, access permissions, who gets access, it, it is at the analysis site at DBGAP, and uh, uh, when people come to the website, they can uh, look at what's available, find out what they download, and uh, then they will use SRA tools to download these files. They'll download a shopping cart, which is a really small file, and they can just, for example, move it to the cloud and download from there. So it's really leveraging existing resources, but looking for additional opportunities to collaborate. But another thing that I think is really interesting is it allows the community to say, you know, if you have different collaborate uh, logical projects or generating these kind of data, to develop their own software for data availability and presentation. It gives you that kind of flexibility because of all the different uh, infrastructures, uh, for example, authentication, for example, uh, dbGaP provides this uh, telemetry of availability. It gives us the foundation to build these things. So I, I think it's really exciting. Well, here's how the system works. Well, first is standard process where people apply for access. It's approved by dbGaP stack and uh, then user has access. All these records are in the dbGaP database. And then the user can come to the ADSV website where they can log in using their ERA Commons ID. And the beauty of here is it's authenticated using the existing NS iTrust, which means I don't need to save their password. And I don't want to do that. But uh, uh, it's secure, it's updated. And of course, uh, since it's ER Commons ID, that is public. It's on everybody's, uh, you know, when, when, when investigators write grants, uh, that's, that's public. So it's not an issue. Uh, users can then log into the portal. We also know who has access to what files because of their, based on their consent levels. And then they can select what to download. Once they have the file saved in a uh, shopping cart, they check out, and then they use the SRA tools that DBGAM has developed, which is uh, actually very flexible, very efficient. 
and it's also all the files that are here. So I, I think this software has a lot of potential. We'd like to see what additions we can do, like different kinds of visualization and representation of uh, information. One other thing we do is actually we also include some additional quality metrics, which the sequence centers do not generate, but these are some things that other people add, so different ways to visualize things. So again, uh, this portal, it's a great experience working with Mike, uh, working with Adam Stein, and uh, the DB guy, SRA staff. You guys have been so helpful. This this is a great example of how we can collaborate with DB Gap using existing infrastructure. All the sequencing, genotype, phenotype data are on DB Gap. We list all the available files because first, well, we get the telemetry from DB Gap. The second is uh, we are the data coin center, so it gives us more flexibility. We get nightly updates and we use the existing authentication system. So. Uh, in summary, I, well, it's uh, five years, and I, I'm really glad uh, to be part of this uh, project and uh, able to work with DBGAP, work with Mike's team, and I, I think there are still a lot of things that we can explore in terms of uh, how to collaborate, but, uh, well, big data sharing is a challenge, ADSV is a good example, and uh, let's see how it goes. And this is the acknowledgement slide, and uh, I'd like to thank DBGAP and sorry for all the help. Thank you. Are, are there any questions? Yes. Thank you for reminding that. Yes. The question was, isn't it true that portal uh, has also been used for single cell? Yeah, the single cell uh, concern, yes. Uh, the software is actually, uh, you can use it for other projects. And uh, if anyone's interested, uh, let me know. Hey, I have a super quick question. So uh, what role do containers play uh, in uh, the tools that you guys use? And do you distribute any of those containers? Uh, we're not using containers to set up these things. The portal is actually, uh, it's, it's a web server, it's, hit, it's on our server. The portal doesn't have to reside on the cloud. Yeah, because the actual, all the actual data transfer is uh, separate from that. It's, I don't know if that answers your question. No, I right. meant for your bioinformatics analysis tools. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we're looking into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks. Oh.